Okay, great. Um, so, so the brand discovery process, um, we can get to the next slide. It sounds very overwhelming. You know, how am I going to uncover your brand? And uh, Reach is, is considered the global leader in personal branding, and my co-author and um, partner, William Maruda, developed you know, a really specific process for uncovering, communicating, and managing your personal brand. The, the processes, you know, the steps in the process, three steps, extract, express, exude, all of them begin with EX because even though your brand is authentic to who you are and comes from you, your brand is really external. It's held in the hearts and minds of others. Uh, and, and this process is out, actually outlined in Career Distinction. And there's uh, a corresponding free workbook that comes with the book. And all the exercises for going through the process, you can actually do in a self-paced way um, by, by downloading that workbook. It's careerdistinction.com slash workbook. So there's a, a resource for you so that you can get access right away to the process and it's not so overwhelming. Right. Uh, so, Next slide. Uh, so really what you're trying to do in the brand discovery process is, is really you know, get this, this self-awareness, right? Understanding who you are, understanding you know, who your target audience is, and then you know, once you hone in on a target audience, you're, you're in a better position to understand who your peers and competitors are. And your brand actually lies at the intersection of, of these three things. And, and you really can't um, discover your brand without really looking at all three of these areas. And now we'll dive um, in more closely into each of the three. So on the next slide, let's start with you. And when you're doing the the, the internal work, um, you, you, know, you first want to, want to really um, think about who you are from an internal perspective, but then you also have to marry that up with what other people who know you well are saying about you. Um, so on the next slide, uh, the, one of the first things that you can look at um, internally is really thinking about your goals, long-term goals. Um, you know, what's the 50,000 foot view? What do you want to have people say about you when you die? Um, you know, when do you want to retire? You know, all of these long-term goals really help to give your brand direction so that, you know, all of your efforts are going to, you know, point your brand uh, toward your goals. And then on the next slide, we also get into what we call VPs, which is your vision, your purpose, your values, and your passions. And we have exercises um, in, in each of these areas. Um, and you know, a lot of people struggle with you know, vision and think, oh gosh, you know, how am I going to come up with my vision for the world? But really when you think about this broader vision and how you know, and your purpose in achieving that vision, it's going to cause you to really think bigger. And what I found in working with clients around vision is that um, we tend to grow into our vision, right? We don't necessarily see, you know, oh, what little old me could do about, you know, improving education or, you know, world peace or solving the, the global energy crisis. Uh, but, but over time, we really understand that we could have an impact in some of these larger issues that have, have meaning to us. Uh, so then on the next slide, um, now we marry up all that, that internal work that we're doing with external perceptions. Um, we have a, a formal tool for doing this, which I'll tell you about in a second, but really you want to listen to what other people say about you. When you're being introduced to others, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, um, you know, meet Sally. Sally is the most organized person on the planet. You know, you want something done, you've, you've got to connect with Sally, right? Um, and, and, you know, these external perceptions, we call them brand attributes. And when you want to think about your brand attributes in terms of emotional brand attributes and rational brand attributes. So a rational brand attribute, um, think of that as, as the table stakes that get you into the game. It's what everybody else has to have at a minimum in order to be considered for the opportunity. Um, and, and so, you know, if you're an accountant, you know, an emotional, a rational brand attribute might be, you know, 
ethical or dependable, right? You wouldn't want an accountant who's not dependable or ethical. Uh, and, you know, so those are the, the attributes that would really be a part of the job description. Now, layered on top of that is an emotional brand attribute. And think of an emotional brand attribute as a tipping point, right? It, it tips the scales in favor of us. It causes people to hire us over our peers and competitors. You know, it's what differentiates us. It would, emotional brand attributes cause people to love us, okay? Um, and, and, and if you go to the next slide, so we have this tool called 360 Reach, which is the world's first online personal brand assessment. And it actually um, allows you to survey anyone in your life who knows you well and you know, really to find out what brand attributes they associate with you, you know, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and so forth. And it's based on corporate brand assessments and it's applied to people. And uh, so you get access to this tool and um, I highly recommend the premium version of the tool because then you get a report. So it's about $50 for, for this tool and it's going to be you know, probably the best money you've ever spent in terms of really getting incredible input that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Um, it's definitely a scary process to open yourself up to this feedback, uh, but, but I've never had anyone ever regret doing it. And um, it, it, it's such rich data uh, for your brand. And when you're doing this the first time, you're really getting um, a baseline of where your reputation stands right now in, in the marketplace. And, and really the word reputation is synonymous with your personal brand. Um, and, and then you can determine how you want to be known. And then you could do this again in a year and really see how you have affected the perception of your brand. Uh, so, so it's a tool that you can actually keep on using over time to sort of measure uh, your progress um, you know, very, very tangibly. Now, um, as you may have read on uh, the, the TypePad website, uh, I'm actually giving away as part of this webinar uh, two uh, premium access um, to 360 Reach and, and a little bit of help around that report. So uh, kind of a mini personal branding consultation um, and we'll, we'll have a drawing uh, for those two uh, at the end of the call. So uh, glad you're here and good luck with that. And I did uh, want to say uh, the REACH tool is really fantastic. I went through it about a year ago and it's really, really good stuff. Very, very useful. Thanks. And, and you know, you, can, you really want to survey anyone in your life who knows you well. And what's neat about this is it's it, versus some, some other 360s that you might have done, you know, internally, um, you know, at a company is that, uh, you know, you can, you can survey friends and family in addition to colleagues. Um, and so you can really see how your brand perception is sort of inside and outside of work as well. Uh, so, uh, so that is the external perceptions. And on the next slide, we'll get into target audience. And um, I find in working with um, my clients, particularly entrepreneurs, um, that target audience is, is one of the most difficult cult concepts. Um, in the, the personal branding process. And, um, but it's one of the most necessary. Um, I, I, I would, would guess that all of you on the call do not have the budget of Coca-Cola, right? Coca-Cola's target audience is the world. And, and we certainly you know, can't try with the budgets that we have as small business owners to reach the whole entire world with our message. And so uh, target audience is really critical for um, you know, marketing spend, the marketing budget, um, but it's also really critical because um, you know, personal branding is not really about being famous. It's not about you know, having everybody in the world know who you are. It's really about being selectively famous. You only really are trying to be known to your ideal clients, right? The people who really need to know who you are. Um, so, so really having a solid understanding of your target audience from a, a psychographic and a demographic point of view and knowing who influences them is really important. And of course, this also comes into play, of course, when you're writing uh, your blog because you really want to write blog posts that you know, speak 
specifically to your target audience, right? Uh, so the next slide. Uh, so the smaller, smaller, smaller you make your target audience, the more successful you are going to be. Um, it's, it's, it's absolutely true. 